Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me on for this CERN meeting about the COVID-19 program. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the peptides that activate T-cells in COVID-19 patients. So first, I'm going to go a little bit over the background about how the virus, SARS-CoV-2, infects our body and produces these peptides that we can take advantage of to try to create a better vaccine. So basically, when a virus infects our body, it's hijacking the machinery of our normal cells to make more copies of themselves. So you probably recognize this picture. It's a very famous diagram of the way that the, the virus looks. When a person uh, unfortunately becomes infected, that virus uh, travels through their airways and starts to infect the tissues of the lung cells and, and the intestinal cells. Once it contacts a cell, it starts to make more copies of itself. And ultimately, those copies get released by the cell. So that goes into the airway and affects other cells or into the bloodstream and affects other tissues within our body. Now, the problem is when those viruses hit other cells, they're going to make more viruses. And then before you know it, you people come down with the illness. And then before you know it, after that, we've got a pandemic happening throughout the world. Now, a downfall of when a virus is infecting a cell is that it's actually pretty messy. It tries to make many, many copies of itself, but a lot of those are miscopied, uh, bad copies. And so uh, what I'm showing here is that instead of a, a nice virus, we've got parts of a virus that happen. So when that happens, our cell tries to deal with that. Our cells have a way of disposing of these bad proteins. And that is actually ultimately how our body recognizes viruses. So this is a molecule within our cell called the proteasome. And what it does is degrade or is the garbage disposal of bad cell proteins. Now, due to COVID-19, I've become a lot more expert in things I don't want to be an expert in. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I had to change our garbage disposal. And that's right here. Now, I purposely picked a picture that shows the same kind of orientation as the proteasome. Because when you toss your pizza into the garbage disposal, it's chopping it up. And the same way, when we have a bad protein in the cell, it goes into the top of the proteasome and out comes even smaller proteins. These are digested short parts of proteins called peptides or even the individual amino acids. Now from there, our body tries to defend itself by increasing the number of T cells. Now I've specifically showing within the cell just those small peptides, not the whole virus, but there's a lot going on in the cell. To, um, but just for clarity, I'm showing the small peptides within the cell. So. Within the cell, these small peptides then get put onto another molecule. And I'm just going to abbreviate it rather than reading off the whole name. It's called the HLA molecule. So these peptides within the cell that are from the virus now actually are shown on the surface of the cell. In turn, our T cells, and we have millions and billions of these within our body, and they're in various parts of our body. When they encounter a cell with an HLA molecule that it can specifically recognize. So here we have a T cell. And in turn, it has a receptor called the TCR. And this particular T cell has the specific receptor complex for this HLA with these specific SARS-CoV-2 peptides. So if all that matches up, then this T cell will do two things. First, it will kill the infected cell. So that's how we get rid of infected cells in our body when we're infected with a virus. And then the second thing is, it will make many, many more copies of itself so that in the future, our body can defend itself against these invading pathogens. Now, how does a vaccine work? So the concept behind a vaccine is basically the uh, good old dogma using the hair of the dog that bit you. So this is our little puppy, uh, Bo. Um, he's actually a lot bigger now. That's when we just got him. 
But uh, uh, the concept behind a vaccine is take that little bit of the vex, of the virus that's invading us and try to increase the number of T cells and antibodies by pre-stimulating the immune system. So what we get when we get a, a vaccine are pieces of the virus. It's not the whole virus, uh, it's just parts of it. And then in turn, that will stimulate our immune system, hopefully bringing up these cells that will specifically recognize that piece of the COVID virus on our cells in our body and multiply that. So now our body is ready for when an actual virus comes along and tries to infect us. It also creates antibodies and, um, and that's a big target of vaccines right now. I don't wanna get into that. I just wanna focus on our T cell work today. So why do we want to identify what the T cell recognizes? Well, first of all, a vaccine is not as simple as giving a ground up virus. Now, the very earliest viruses, like when um, Edward Jenner and um, Louis Pasteur made their vaccines, they could basically just take the virus, grind it up, and give it to people, and that worked. That's true for certain viruses, but it's definitely not true for coronaviruses and other types of viruses. In fact, actually, most parts of a virus don't increase the amount of T cells when they're in body. Right now, we have a lot of vaccines in clinical trials. These were rushed into production. Uh, I, I certainly don't fault people for wanting to, to try to get something to production because we really need it. Now, those are using large parts of the virus. It might work. Unfortunately, there are precedents that for the coronaviruses, large parts don't necessarily work, that you actually have to hone it down and get specific parts of the virus. So what we proposed in our work is that the next generation of vaccines should really focus on the key parts that stimulate T cells. Now, the advantage of doing that is you're gonna pick out the essential elements of the virus and you're gonna have it in a much higher concentration when you give it to a person. You're gonna avoid potential side effects from the non-useful parts of the vaccine, of the virus. And that's especially true now. Uh, just recently, they halted the AstraZeneca trial because of a side effect uh, noted in one patient. Now, we don't know whether or not it's due to having that whole part of the virus there, but certainly you can reduce the amount of side effects if you're just taking out the key parts of the virus. Now, for our specific approach, we can make these small peptides on a peptide synthesizer. So it's not a different, difficult biologic production. When you make a whole virus and grind it up, you actually have to produce it in cells. It's a huge production. You have to have these enormous vats and grow up cells and then purify it and make sure it's clean. With a peptide synthesizer, it's just getting it out of a machine and it's almost ready to go straight out of that machine. So what is our method for isolating these key parts? Well, we make key parts of the infamous spike protein in a peptide synthesizer. We then incubate those parts of the spike protein with purified proteasome. So this is all happening in a test tube. Now the proteasome does its job and releases many, many small peptides in the test tube. And we collect those degraded peptides. Now, some of the peptides are the ones that we want. Some are the ones that we don't want. And I show the ones that we don't want in the open triangles. We can collect those peptides from our proteasome digestion and then incubate it in a test tube that has the HLA molecule attached. Now, we let it incubate and the HLA molecules will recognize the virus peptides that we're interested in and specifically bind those. The ones that we don't want won't bind and they're sitting free in the in the aqueous solution of the test tube. Next, we can get rid of the peptides that we don't want by washing the test tube. And then we can elute the peptides that we do want off the HLA molecules for the next step. Now, I wanna emphasize that the amount of virus that we're getting from these kind of 
uh, test tube experiment is extremely small. It's only on the order of 10 to the minus 15th grams, which is a femtogram or so of molecule. And that's not very much at all. But technology has progressed to the point where we can se sequence those peptides in something called a mass spectrometer and determine the amino acid sequence of those peptides, as I'm showing here. Now, once we know the sequences of those peptides, we can then in turn synthesize them on the peptide synthesizer. So we're going from this information that only has femtograms, 10 to the minus 15th grams, to getting the sequence information, to putting it onto a peptide synthesizer, then we can make milligram to gram quantities of that particular peptide. Once we have that much peptide, there's many, many experiments we can do. And first, we want to ensure that the peptides that we've sequenced actually do indeed work. So we do uh, test tube experiments again to verify that the peptide will bind to HLA in a specific kind of test tube experiment called a a uh, binding experiment. Next, we will show that the peptides can induce the killing of human cells that express the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, using uh, human stem cells. And then finally, we want to confirm that at least in animal models, that the peptides will induce a protective T-cell response that will protect from SARS-CoV-2 infection. So the ultimate goal of our work is to determine the peptides that can go into the next generation of vaccines with the ultimate goal of ending our pandemic.